Listen, man, I wish that were true. I wish men could tell women, hey, yo, hey, yo, what a time to be alive. You're this sketchy. I wish that was true. I wish a man could really like, because, you know, in relationships, it's like somebody's right, somebody's wrong. It's usually the person that gets the most love, that got the most leverage. But you want to look at a woman and say, because my thing is, I'm all for independence. This went a whole nother way because I played this song, but I'm all for independence and a woman getting her own money and I, and, and I want her to be the queen and the dawn and I want her to own businesses. But I also take a certain pride in making a woman like my, my, my project, my queen, you know, you know, go from zero to 100 with her. You know what I'm saying? Take her to another level. But after you a guy that if you like me, you came from nothing. Like last night I was sitting down with some billionaires and they were telling me stories. This one guy was my brother. He told me he sold fake jewelry and fake stuff uh, in the streets of Philly. Now he's a Billy Billy, owns a piece of Walmart. And... But when you come for nothing and you give a woman everything, you know, because a lot of guys, they lie to women. Women, you got to understand that the greatest women, the greatest women, women that we look up to a million, you know, women that we worship, sing the best songs. They get manipulated by a man because the man got that talk. You understand? And so. You know, and they tell you, yo, if I came up, baby, if I had it, I would give it to you. But then you got some circumstances, like in my case, where I came up and I gave it to you. <laughs> or other guys who gave came up and gave it to them. And so, same thing with women. I feel like if a woman really loves a man and she was with him with nothing, she came up, she going to take care of him. But, you know, they, you know, relationships, they get real rusty. And so, uh, when a song like this come out, oh, Lord. all wish we could sing that to our woman. Yo, D-Nice, we all, yo, D-Nice, every time I play a song, you pop up and say, that's my shit. Yo, Domingo, what's good? It's like, you want to be able to tell your woman, you want to look at her and be like, tell me where, where, where will you go? And who's going to love you like I do? Ladies, gentlemen, be very careful. Be very careful. <laughs> hey, yo, that got me thinking. So, you know, I posted today, me and Yankee Stadium, legendary night, 50th anniversary of hip hop. You know, I went upstairs. I went on that stage and every the whole world was there. I had to let my fat flow. You know what I'm saying? I had to go topless and let my fat flow. And, and you know... When I come home, man, from a day's work, I mean, they take 100 pictures. Fat Joe, they take a picture. I'm sucking my stomach in. You know, I want to come home and let my fat flow. So I felt like Yankee Stadium was my home, the Bronx. So I had to say, welcome to the Bronx. I'm going to let my fat flow. And so when we think about interesting couples, you know, I was thinking, right? You know, Bobby and Whitney, uh, you know. Bobby and Whitney was this couple that we couldn't get away. Imagine Bobby and Whitney was in Instagram. Jesus Christ. Like, because back in the day, some shit had happened. And it could be fake. Most of it was probably fake. But us as fans, you had to go to the supermarket and buy the fucking tabloid. So the shit could be three months old. They already got 12 more scandalous stories. But imagine Bobby and Whitney on IG. A young Bobby Brown. A young Whitney. Uh, you know, it takes me back to, you know, some of these people are going to kill me because they all my family. But, but you know, it's shit. It takes me back to, uh, you know, uh, Mary J and KC. Man, that was that. You know, they started that that uh, famous couple shit. I'm sure there was famous couples. I seen who did I see one time? I saw Richard Pryor and uh the original Foxy Brown back in the day, day, day. They was rocking out. And so we always been intrigued by that, you know, 
Uh, Rihanna and Chris Brown, that thing was fire. Uh, Kanye and Amber Rose. And then the, the reggae Tornados got in on this too. So we have my brother Anuel with Carol G. And uh, uh, Nicki Minaj and Meek Mill. That was a good one. We, 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 we thought that was dope. Oh, uh, Mark Anthony, J-Lo. Man, we thought, I thought that was going to work out for real to Mark Anthony, J-Lo. Shout out to my sister, J-Lo. She got the movie coming out February 16th. Motherfucker always get mad at Joe. I start trending in Twitter every time. This time was, they mad I'm the psychiatrist. They mad I'm the therapist. They don't realize I'm a fucking psychiatrist, therapist every day of my life. So, you know, when you got a crew like the Terror Squad, and we, I got to talk guys out of hurting you, uh, this is a lot of psychiatry going on. I got to really talk to my brothers and talk them off a cloud. Let me see what type of uh, corruption B-Dot is talking about on here. Because the guy's a bad guy when it comes to Instagram. The sweetest guy in the world. But when it comes to Instagram and he starts talking to shit, J-Lo got more rings than... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you gotta stop. Yo, we, we not. You gotta. The woman's happily married with my brother Ben Affleck. You know what I'm saying? Ben is a really good guy. You know, you see uh, pictures of him closing the door hard, or he always got like a mean face or some shit. But I tell you, he's the most supportive, the best guy in the world, bro. He's very uh, misunderstood. Uh, Janet Jackson, Jermaine Dupree, and he had Janet Jackson six-packed up. That was that Janet Jack. You remember B Dot? That Janet Jackson, Jermaine Dupree was with? I mean, we love Janet, you know, it's Pun's favorite ever. But you know, that Janet Jackson at that time, that was like when Buster got cocked diesel six-packed up. You know, for <laughs> you know, that was one of those, you know, moments. You know, everybody was jealous of that man. Of course, Remy and Pat, Black Love. Uh, now, the ultimate couple was Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King. Like, so, you know, not, I mean, to me, uh, greatest American ever lived is Martin Luther King. I say this every year, anytime, you know, it's the greatest. You know, anybody who can use peaceful protests, use love to overcome hate. You got to understand, people couldn't even get on the bus together. People couldn't even drink the same water, use the same bathrooms, segregation. You know, this man took so much uh, pain for us to live the dream, right? But then also, if we were scared for Martin, how scared was Coretta Scott King, like being the wife, being the symbol, the emblem. You know, after she he died, she walked the street. So everybody, you know, you know, everybody say, uh, Coretta Scott King is she the one because it's cute to support your man, but you know, Coretta Scott King, she put her life on the line. You know, that's as gangster as you could get. And so, you know, people get mad because what's my man, Jonathan Majors, who I do not, and I sympathize with all women for domestic violence, but I do not believe he's guilty of that. I just don't. Why? Because I see men beat up girls. I've seen them, they, 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 they aggressive, agitated, this, that. This man was running away from her. Maybe he grabbed his phone back and it scratched her by mistake. You know, but a guy that's getting chased down for 20 blocks, still in all, he think he looking for Coretta Scott King. He was looking for the white girl for Coretta Scott King. Man, you, yeah, you got this fucked up, bro. Yo, yo, man. Oh, he wanted her to be Coretta. Yo. Man, how he slipped through the cracks? How this guy became like a mega star, like a mega, mega star? Because, man, yo, you know, Joe, you know, sometimes I say some things going to get uh, people upset on here. 
Because I'm just speaking uh, my subjective opinion on different things. Not chatty patty. Not chatty patty because I don't get really involved with people's shit and, and all that. But I, I, I understand I work, work for a couple of... Uh, you know, I'm not, you know, I ruffle a couple of feathers every now and then. Khalees and Nas, of course, you know, we brought back uh, Ashanti and Nelly. They look so happily ever after. So the other day, Ashanti FaceTimed me with Nelly. And they were like, hey, bro, this, this, that. And you remember they had the rumor she was pregnant. It was just a rumor. And I, I immediately told them I need 10% of this kid because... If it wasn't for Versus that I brought Nelly out, me against Ja Rule, that's when they saw each other and that energy connected again. That's when he said, I got to have her. Now, he was over there contemplating. He really want to go over there. But he was contemplating. And my brother Mayor was like, yo, bro, what the fuck you waiting for? So he goes over there and that starts the conversation. You know, somebody got to crack the ice. I don't know why they fell out, but something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> said Fat Joe and Lorena. I was talking about she ain't a rapper, singer, nothing like that. She a real one. <laughs> she a real one. I'm talking about Swiss and Alicia. Oh, uh, mega power couple. Um. No matter how talented a woman could be, how incredible and special, it's even better when they got a strong man by them, right? And vice versa. She added that thing to him that, you know, uh, he was talking to the people, but then he started talking to Oprah and them and the art community. You know, uh, the, the, I think that's the perfect unveiling of a famous couple. Me, I'm scared of famous chicks. I'm scared of, you know, I, you know, I know how full of shit the famous guys are. So I'm terrified of a famous chick because Lord knows, uh, Cardi B offset, you know, Cardi B and offset, you know, I mean, we had some, we got many more to come. We got, uh, we got a real famous young couple that never announced they're together. And that's why they finally still together. Because I also think once once you let out that that you were such and such, everybody in your fucking business. And so, like, this is why I always said reality TV is like a death trap because now it don't become you and his... Look, women, you know he a fuck up. Ladies, you know, guys, you know your, your girl, she might be a fuck up too, Right? But now that you're on TV and the whole world and your family, it might be your aunt that never get involved with your shit. She see you on TV. She hitting you up like you letting that man talk to you like that. And so everybody in your business, everybody got a conversation. Something happened that you would have normally possibly been upset, furious, but worked it out. Now it's like you got to keep it real and not work it out because I got to show uh, the Instagram and everybody that, you know, I don't give a, and a lot of relationships have been destroyed because of this public shit. And so, got to be careful what you wish for. You're like, yo, I want to get lit. I want to go on Instagram. You know, it's cool. Uh, or you, you want to be like, like that, but you know, that's how shit and quick. And so uh, I really ain't come up here to talk shit about that. But shout out to my Knicks. My Knicks is scraping everybody. Jalen Brunson, how he's not starting point guard of the East Coast, dropping 41 every night. It's a disrespect to the true art form of basketball. But I guess you got, he's not a bragger. See, the thing with Jalen Brunson, he gets the job done. He stays quiet, clean cut. He's out the way. These other guys want to throw gang signs and act like this and color their hair and shit like that. So you think they extra. It's cool. All I know is that he turned my team around 
And boy, we scraping everybody. And we're going to win tonight again. Shout out to the Knicks. It's been a long time since we really felt like we could win like this. And uh, Dallas Cowboy, what's new? See, you talk about the domestic violence. That's me and Rich Player. If you ever see Rich Player, he's the guy that you see in my Instagram on all the pictures looking like this. He just looked like he just got a he got a grill that your mama want across the street when when she walking across the street. He always like. And so Rich Player, because he played football a lot, he got the CTE. You know, he's a huge Dallas Cowboy fan. So I got to like quietly uh, root for them because when they lose, he got a fucking problem. Right? And so I don't want him to, you know, I tell people all the time, something happened to me is rich player to God. You know, my best friend. You know, the guy with me every day. Watch that guy. The guy in all the pictures, it's him. Right? And so I don't fuck with the man. I try to pray. Sometimes I even pray so Dallas could win because if not, I'm in this domestic violence shit to where he catches these uh, CTE attacks. And want to fuck me up. Yo, 2J's out there in Japan. What's up, brother? And so, um, I root for Dallas, but they're good team. They're not great. They're not, shout out to OG Muggs. It was his birthday the other day. We went out there and uh, we went to his cigar lounge out there. And we was chilling with the whole Inglewood family out there in L.A. Shout out to Cali. Uh... Great time. You know, I went to this place. You know, I love this place. It's called Steak 48. Uh, I first found out from my brother Domingo, my Mexican homie out there in uh, Houston, Texas. And man, they brought one to Be Beverly Hills and I can't get enough. You know, the other day I walked in there. You know, I got the Rolls Royce outside. We icy. I got a chrome hard suit, like 2,500, 3,000. And so the security... They try to tell me I don't meet the dress code. And so, uh, and so, yep, you know, uh, you know, we may be famous, we may have a dollar, but you know, every now and then we get a, a harsh reality. He said, yo, you don't meet the dress code. This is a sweatsuit. You know, he says, I ain't let some other people in and this and this and that. And he said, how could I do it to you? I said, because maybe I'm a rap superstar icon that you should want to parade me through this restaurant so they can say Fat Joe's in the building. You know, in, in L.A., I'm like Snoop Dogg, meaning when Snoop Dogg come to New York, he don't come enough. So when he comes, it's like, oh, shit, Snoop's here. When you got Fat Joe in the L.A. restaurant, bro, <laughs> Handle with care. <laughs> Handle with care. We worked it out. You know, I had to become humble. He put me in a private room. I appreciate that. I went back the next day again and I made sure I dressed so nice because I love the restaurant. And I realized, hey, there's rules. There's rules to be, uh, uh you know, you got to follow the fucking rules. So I went out there. But anyway, Jack Prescott got to go. Dak Prescott got to go. You know, Ice Spice, she got sued. Welcome to the club, Ice Spice. Anytime you make a real hit record, you have to get sued. By who? A bozo that most likely never met you. Who's sitting in a barn somewhere. B-A-R-N, listening to my man... <laughs> <laughs> listening to some country shit come and thought he thought of that you know this country the biggest crime in this country is being able to sue anybody for anything you go to McDonald's you, they gotta put this is hot coffee because you'll sue them for the hot coffee you ordered or slip on some who cares it's ambulance chases yesterday I went for a real long drive I was on the highway. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. Listening to music that I love. Going for a drive. That's how I think. And every fucking, every billboard was an ambulance chaser. Yo, this guy for accidents. This guy personal injury. This guy for accidents. This guy. Yo, all the money is being made 
by lawsuit guys. So these guys are ambulance chasers. What does that mean, Joe? Okay, they'll sue anybody. And they're going to get a third of what they win. So what happens? I don't want to tell you the real spill on that. Better call Sal. Yeah, y'all be that. Nah, it's out of control, Morgan and Morgan. This one and that one. This one. It's like, yo. And it's all lawsuit shit because America has a sickness called suing. And so Ice Spice, I know you're new in the game. You're getting some money. Don't be surprised. You got 40 more coming through your career. I do. I have three right now from guys I probably never even met. Actually, I never met them. I don't know them. And, <laughs> yo, Terror Squad presents Fat Joe. Let me tell you something. I even got to fight for my name. Right? I got a guy trying to, trying to take Terror Squad, the name. Now, I've been TS for 40 years. You don't have Terror Squad albums and Trinities. These guys are called trolls. That they look, they say, ah, Joe was sleeping. And they try to keep your shit and maybe you got to pay them for your own name back. Like, this country is filled with people who do not want to get off their ass, do not want to work, and fucking want to sue somebody for something. So Ice Spice, welcome to the club. I've been sued 40 times in my life. It's just what it is, man. Shout out to Rhythm and Flow Part 2. I know they didn't bring me back. I thought I was a hell of a judge. But my brother Khaled, one of the judges. Lotto, one of the judges. Luda, one of the judges. This is something I got to see. This is something... I have to see his big skit, the biggest blogger in the game, Spice Adams. <laughs> Yo, listen, man, we got a group of eclectic friends that tune in. You might get Melbourne Moore in a second, living legend. And so I know I said Ice Spice, not Spice Adams. It's a different type of thing, but it's all love. You know what I'm saying? And so Joe and Kamala, right? This is when they get a little real. Um, they got a problem. They got a major problem. And so Trump sweeps Iowa by 50%. And so I seen an interview a little while ago where a guy said, yo, man, you know, he's like us. He got a mug shot. So I'm voting for him. I never thought I would vote for him. Um, I seen another guy in the new shit they doing. Listen, guys, you got to be careful. The simplest way to do it is don't throw stones while in a glass house. The simplest thing is now the cable news like MSNBC, if Trump wins, you know, a, a, a race and he's running for president of the United States, you might not like him, but now you don't even want to cover him. So remember, they was like, uh, anybody who shoot up to school, school Serial killer, they looking for fame. So they started saying, we're not even going to say their name. So now they saying, yo, we're not playing Trump's victory speech. 74 million people voted for him. Now, you know, you guys know, I don't fuck with Trump. You guys know that. And I'm afraid he might be coming back. And the problem with that is you all forget that when he was here, it was white supremacy. It was people marching in the street with the tiki. We had all that George Floyd shit. We had all these things, the racial tension. They had to call the, the street across the street from the White House, Black Lives Matter, because the, shit, the, the disrespect was out of control. That's coming back on steroids. Because who you think is pushing for this man to get elected? Insurrection. Motherfucker try to take over the country. Have you ever heard of that? In America? There's people in jail for 18 years, 20 years, this, this, that. Trying to take over America. Look, I'm not telling you who to vote for. But uh, it feels like Kamala and Joe a little sleep at the wheel. And they better get the fuck up if they trying to win. Now, 
I'm a diehard Democrat. You know I'm voting for them anyway. It's, I told the vice president in the face, I said, listen, I love you. I'm proud that you're the first female black uh, vice president, but I was voting for you anyway because I'm a diehard Democrat. I'm like the, the old lady that used to be wherever Obama was up and she go, fired up, fired up, fired, I'm fired up. That's me, I'm a sucker. Um, but sleeping at the wheel. Now, what does that mean? It's time to get in the streets, wake up, because it's on out there. And Trump, it seemed like he got a speech every day. Now we talk about Biden's age. Trump is fucking three years younger. And he, Trump got more energy than me. Fat Joe got to sleep. I come on here and I cry to y'all that my shoulder hurts from leaning back, my knees, my ankle. I need two massages a week, three, at least just to look like Fat Joe. But Joe Biden? And so Trump got this energy. I don't know if he's on the NAD, steroids, what type of shit he on, but he on it. The problem is you got to hear the people, man. Listen, guys. What happened to Israel was terrible. They deserve to free the hostages. That was terrible. I don't care who looks at it. You can't rape women and kill kids and all I say is freedom fighting. I'm sorry. Right? But... Over 50 people have died in Gaza. Most of them are not even fighters and nothing, just women and kids and maybe 10,000 babies. The people want a ceasefire. And so you got to give the people what they want. They want to stop this shit and choose love over hate. Now, we're from over here. And so what you need to understand, we only know what we see on social media, what we hear from friends. We're over here, right? But what we do know is that we're supposed to be the land of the free, the heart, this, this, that, bro. And so what the people are asking Joe Biden and Kamala, unfortunately, this happened on their watch. And when you're the president and vice president, you're somehow responsible for what's going on. What the people want is peace. The people are tired of seeing babies dead. The people are tired of seeing this. So you got to listen. And Joe Biden, you um, you are the leader of the free world. And so be careful, man. And to be careful because we criticize uh, communism. All right. So what happens the minute there's a coup, Right. Do y'all want to learn something? Throw some fire signs. Yeah, I, I see you, Steve. And then all my Israel friends are on here and they approve. They, they say that, you, it's, you know, enough. we need peace, bro. Listen. In a dictatorship, when they take over a country, the first thing they do is take over the TV stations. The news is called proper Gander. If you go to Cuba or Russia right now, all you'll see is Putin giving amazing speeches or Fidel Castro, whoever the president is, it's not him no more. Giving speeches is called propaganda. Now, if we're in America, the home of the brave, and Donald Trump, who I don't like, won a victory and the people of Iowa voted for him, we must hear his victory speech. Although you disagree, you can't be on liberal TV, MSNBC and CNN talking about we're not going to play Donald Trump. Be careful what you wish for, because the type of moves that's being made right now in America is very, very extreme. It's very, very extreme. And, and that's about as much as I go into it. But, you know, I love Kamala Harris, Joe Biden. You know, it's a lot of big misconceptions out there 
They're, they're going to have to look. When I was growing up, right, we could not, you were not allowed to fight. You could defend a kid that doesn't bother nobody if they bullying him. But if the kid doesn't fight for himself, you cannot defend him and fight for them. I just told you I'm a die hard Democrat, and I'm telling you that I cannot fight for you if you don't fight for yourself. If you don't hear the people and what they're saying, see, the job of the politician is to hear what the people are saying. A lot of them false promises that they're going to do something they don't do, and some of them do the right thing. But you got to know what the voters are saying. And it's written right there. You got to make a move. You got to bust a move. Yo, look, I support you, but this, this is what's happening over here. Right now, I run this shit, and I'm going back to run this shit. We got to fix this. And so all this about they're not showing people and this and this and that, and I don't fuck with Donald Trump. I'm tired of telling y'all. You know, but people think he gave him PPP. People think he gave him PPP. You know, Donald Trump, let me tell you something. Donald Trump is a businessman from New York City. What does that mean, Fat Joe? He had to fuck, he had to deal with some Puerto Ricans. He had to deal with some black people. He had to deal with some Italians. Of course, some Jewish people. Listen to me. He knows us well. Like, really well. And he knows what gets black people and Latinos happy. Y'all, thank God he did it, but bring out Lil Wayne, bring out Kodak, free the guards. Ooh. He fought with us. He bust the move for us. Now, we don't want them in jail. I'm glad he did it. But he knew what he did. Also, when he gave out all that PPP and all that, that was the government looking out for people for a fucking deadly disease that happened. It ain't happened in 100 years, but he made sure he signed all those checks to make you think when you got it, Donald Trump personally gave it to you. He's a New Yorker, city slicker. He know what you want. He know what you want to see. At the same time, he got to appease the white supremacists. Then he go fuck with them. Most of the time. Now I get it. Shout out to the legend Joe Fadu. I get it. We want money everywhere I go. Like this, this is a scary time because I've never seen so many black and Latino people acting like they're going to go on the other side. They're like, fuck that. There ain't no money out here, Joe. I need money. When homeboy was there, he had money. So, you must. I'm going to stay off the politics, but you got to see what's going on. And sometimes you hate somebody so much that you become like them. And that's the, that's the biggest problem. You know, I always, you know what I'm saying? Every time somebody got me upset, you know, because even though Fat Joe is a militant guy, right? Meaning, if you violate me to where I feel violated, I know nothing but violence. I know nothing but snapping back, like, with a heavy hand, right? But even if you hurt my feelings, right? Because who can hurt your feelings? It's the people closest to you. When you hurt my feelings, I say, man, fuck that, man. I'm tired of looking out. I'm tired of being a good man. I'm tired of being the bigger person. I'm tired of this and this and that. And then you got to catch yourself and say, Joe, if you change like them, it's defeating the purpose. So, you can't despise something so much that you start acting like them. Because then, the shit, you falling right into what, you, what, what was going on. And so, 
I still smile. I'm still nice to people. I still trust people. Although I've been burnt by my best of friends, uh, people I love, people I would have did anything for. You know, my thing is, and I'm not bullshitting. If you got Fat Joe, if you look at us and you look at me and the people I rock with or the people I love, <clears throat> a Nori, a Raekwon, a this, a that, the loyalty is unbendable. It's unbendable or unpenetratable. And pause on that. But uh, it's, you know, to have Fat Joe on your side, on your team, loving you by your side, is a priceless thing. And so the flip side of that is terrible. And somebody told me, yo, Joe, and what about... You know, somebody who violates you or this, you this. I said, well, it's not really cool for them no more. And they, well, what do you mean by that, Joe? They're not cool. They, they don't enjoy going to the Dunkin' Donuts anymore. If you disrespect me blatantly in the public and you acting like you want, the, you want it, you no longer eat your sandwich in peace. You just don't. But if you got him, <clears throat> he's on your team. He's on your, you know, he's the most loyal. Now, I tell you all the time, I'm not letting nobody take advantage of me. Nobody extorting me. I don't know extortion. I've never knew extortion in my life. In fact, I used to beg guys because I used to see all these guys get extorted. You know, from drug dealers to rappers, I used to beg for somebody to try to extort me. They wouldn't try to extort me. You know, like the greatest of extorters. Like, you know, I'm standing there with the guys you see in DVDs, documentaries, and they're like, excuse me, Joe, and I got a chain this big on. This shit bigger than a cereal box. Like this, I see that. They go and stick up somebody or, or a rapper for an earring and, and the thinnest see-through chain you... They not crazy. They not crazy. They, they just not crazy. They'll go leave me with a TS chain this bigger than my head and go rob a guy for a fucking see-through chain. They are not crazy. And somebody just said something on there. I'm not going to address it. Let me explain something to you, right? When I'm cool with somebody... For 30 years, I love him, my brother, family, we share holidays, we, we families, I root for you, I don't have to get a dollar with you, but I call you family, I want to make a pact with you guys. I'm never going to change on you. And so if the public all of a sudden don't like a person, you know, so I'm supposed to take a person that I've been cool with for 30 years that their kids call me unk and this and that. And because y'all want to flip, I'm supposed to act like I don't love them no more. Not true, beloveds. Now you convicted of a crime. This is that. You can't do it. I think I was the last member of the R. Kelly fan club. I'm keeping it a buck. First guy ever gave me a hit record. Loved him to death. Rocked out with him first trial. He won. Okay, he's innocent. People, yo, Joe, but what's up? Nah, he's innocent. Because I, I never seen him do nothing wrong. Not me. With my eyes. And so, but. He made it hard to support him. He made it hard to support him. And then he lost and we know he's guilty now. I'm not delirious. He's guilty now. So the best thing I could do is just peace to the gods one and keep my. That's it. But if you're not convicted of some shit and you just and you telling me not to talk to somebody I call my brother, my family for 30 years. Yo, I'm not going to do it. And let me tell you something. I want you to like my music. I want you to love my TV show, read my books, buy my sneakers. But. In a strange way, I'm not in the popularity contest. I'm 
I've been doing this 30 years. I don't, how many more people gonna know Fat Joe? They already know me already. But I'm not doing this to make you like me or some shit like that. I'm just telling you what it is. I'm telling you what it is. In this industry, in this day and age, we got too many. Something happens, we don't like them no more. We off that. I can't do it. I can't, I can't do it. Yeah, they say I'm looking skinny, handsome as fuck. You know what you want me to do? The God is the God regardless. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm from Misery Boulevard, right across the street from my Hope You Die place. And school studied the crime rate. That's when it became apparent to me that the pimps and hustlers would be apparent to me. Shit. Enough's enough. Federals try to set me up. Put me in cuffs and crush what I lost into dust. Plus, they want a brother soul, but they know Big Joey Crack and never read a cat that he know. Come on, man. Udonis Haslam. Last night I went to the Heat game. Shout out my brother Sean Wolfington, courtside with Rich the Barber. You know, he's a Heat fan. They took a L. You know, your man came down, you know. Murray from Atlanta and dropped that three-pointer in their face. One second left. Horrible. Because I swore they were going to win for Udonis. Udonis is homegrown Miami. Miami 305. Bet that up. Whoa. Uh, living legend around here. Played for 20 seasons. I had to be there. Um, Shout out to his wife, his family. Beautiful guy, man. And, uh... I hope he becomes a coach. He deserves that. Now, Udonis had one really, really good year where Dallas tried to go at him and give him, I think, 13, 14 million. And he turned him down to stay in Miami. And, and I think he was getting two, three million a year. I thought that was a mistake because when it comes to uh, sports owners, they really do not keep it real with. The talent. You know, Stephon Mulberry told me one day they banged on his hotel room in uh, Phoenix and told him, yo, you're going. He didn't even know. He had his whole family, house there, kids in school. Good for him. He went to New York. But they take him. But Miami, he kept it real with Miami, which I really thought it was a mistake. And I was every night. In Cool and Dre's studio in Miami, arguing with everybody, telling him, yo, he should have took the bag. But little do I know, they the one franchise that has kept it real with a guy. They fed him 10, 15 years after that, you know, uh, and honored him. And so I got to commend the Miami Heat organization for keeping it real with somebody finally. Because you over there, you know, I tell you all the time. This is different. We're talking about sports, but being an entrepreneur, my sister Lauren Reidinger is out there giving a speech in New York now, uh, Market America. But, you know, when you work for somebody, for good reason or bad reason, they can always fire you. That's why I made myself an entrepreneur to where I own my business. I put my money where my mouth is, and I'm not going to fire myself. Right? And so when it comes to these teams, you think you loyal. You, you know, the Knicks got rid of Patrick Ewing. The Bulls got rid of Scottie Pippen. Fuck. Jordan went to uh, Washington. And so we're, if we're looking for the loyalty of these teams, you got to be fucking kidding me. But he trusted them. And uh, it worked out well for him. And shout out to Udonis retiring his jersey. Uh, he, I feel like that's the only player. If you know some players, say it right here because I feel like he's the only one uh, that a team kept it real with. National DJ Day. What the fuck? Last week was National Pancake Day. I mean, what happens? Is somebody sitting around Instagram talking about, yo, we need something. Yo, National Sax for Fab Day. Post whatever you bought from there. Oh, National. F fuck, I know. 
Every day they come up with some shit, and you, the people, believe this shit. The next thing you know is Couples Day. And some women got to really, really take a picture with an ugly guy that they've been getting them. They've been taking his pockets. They've been getting them for everything. And then you got to take the picture for Instagram because it's National Couples Day. And you got to sit next to a gargoyle. Man, that got to be hard, man. Sitting next to a gargoyle like a fucking monster. He want to take the picture. He been paying the rent, been mind the bags, been making sure your eyes, lashes are done. You fucking head. You, you got to take this picture with this monster. This shit is crazy. National Couples Day is wild to me. It's wild, but all these national days, and so is DJ Day. Uh, I think, of, well, Supreme and Hutch. Yo, man, rest in peace to my brother, my little brother, Keith Nutt, from my building. You know, he died of cancer. Uh, shout out to Anthony Jones, Brenda Wana, you know, legends in my building and my projects. I spoke to AJ three days in a row, man. I love you guys, man. I'm praying for Keith. You know, rest in peace, Brian and Mama joins, you know, beautiful family, bro. And so um, I think it's Supreme and Hutch, uh, the first ones I ever seen. Uh, I think of, uh, of course, we know the Grandmaster Flash is and, you know, cool hurts. But we, I think of when, 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 when hip hop became a more mainer stream, First song on the radio was Mr. Magic. Mr. Magic was killing. You know, he had that magic, magic. Super, super. Blast, blast. And he played that shit. I'm the godfather. I'm a godfather. Right? Uh, Mr. Magic. And then you got Red Alert, you know. And so, you know, you know, Red Alert discovered me. You know, I was in Apollo four weeks in a row. And Red Alert, he... Yeah, dee, 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 dee. you know, on um, Red Alert, first place they ever heard Fat Joe demo was on Red Alert. So that goes without speaking. Uh, if you was young like me, if you was up, you was up. That was the awesome two. Teddy Tag, they play at four in the morning. And so the big people like AJ, who I just said, and Jimmy O and all them, they would we we would have a payphone in front of my building, and they would they would get the boombox and plug it in to the pay so the payphone they would break the part that said phone and in there don't tell me how how they found this shit out was it plugged so they would plug it play music four in the morning in front of the building and that's how we're here so like we are here to tell the world just who we are shocking females. Cause we are superstars. And let me tell you, the base in the face, the eyes in your mind, so make your nature rise. Cause we are the crash crew. And we rock to the dum ban dum ban ban That shit was crazy. And so I would stay up four or five in the, in the morning. I'm talking about five years old, six years old, and just be listening to the older dudes talking about the girls playing the awesome too. That's enough uh, history, uh. Then Stretch and Barbito followed them. Then the mixtape, of course, Kick Capri, Ron G, SNS, Doo Wop, Clue, uh, Envy took it down south with DJ Drama. So, you know, the DJs have always been the most important part of hip hop music. If they don't play your record, you don't get heard. And you remember back in the days, it was like Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Could you imagine that? DJ Jazzy Jeff and Will Smith. Or Jam Master J and Run DMC, um, you know it, it, it. That's it was everything. You know the DJ Scott LaRock, the DJ was everything. So shout out to the DJs on a fake holiday. Uh, you know I've seen this thing. I don't. We've been having fun, but I gotta keep it a buck, man. You know they laid out a report on the Uvalde. Uh, Kids that were massacred in the school. And imagine you're a cop, right? So when we look at the cops, when we look at the army guys, I don't know about you, I do this. I salute them. Thank you for your service. Uh, we disagree with the cops a lot. 
But I salute them because they have a dangerous job. And if it was no police, this world would be in chaos, right? But um, these guys, this guy was in here killing the kids. The kids are calling 911 saying, I'm in here, the man is killing everybody. And they stood outside for like 70 minutes, 60-something minutes before they went in. Uh, these are shook ones. These are cowards with the biggest guns in the world, scared to go in there. And me, of course, I could talk a good one, but I would die for these kids, not even being a cop. Um, and so it's sad that they let all these kids die. Now, you could say a lot of these kids was Mexican, undocumented, maybe they didn't want to risk their life. Man, fuck that. Every kid's life is priceless. I do not know how somebody could contain me if I'm a police officer and I'm hearing this man kill these kids. And so, uh, it, it, they should have, the whole priest and everybody should have got fired. Everybody. Even the guy who eventually killed him waited too long. Yeah, he could have been following protocol. This is when you break protocol and you go rogue. I would have went in. I swear to God, I would have went in. With no vest, no cop, no nothing, I would have bust my gun. I would have went in there to save the kids. They hit me up, fuck it. I went out a hero saving these kids. Oh, uh, Horrible. Really, really horrible. And, and, you know, if suicide bombers can fucking do it for whatever their ideology is, their ideology or their religion, then, you know, shout out to Slick Rick, LL Cool J just recently shared a birthday at the same time. Super living legends, bro. You know, 50th anniversary. It's the 51st now, B dot. And I'm wondering if they trying to die down. You know, you guys, I work all the time. So this ain't about me. Uh, but let's keep that momentum going where you want to see the legends. You want to hire Pete Rock, CL Smooth. You want to hire Slick Rick. You want Everybody works. But, you know, last year was such a beautiful uh, vibe. You know, a time to be alive. We got to keep that going. Um, what they said? The police upheld the Constitution. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Unheld, uh, uh, unheld the conflict. Yo, bro, the guys in there shooting little kids, you go in there and you fucking kill that motherfucker. Just like every time they say, I did, they show me some shit. I think Hocus 4 5th threw up a dude, grown ass man who raped a 10 year old girl. He got the dot. He got to die. He got to go. And so you talk to me, Joe, you, you help the health care, you help the people, you give out, you positive. Yeah, I'm positive. But raping little kids, grown ass man, he got to go. And so uh, the best thing for him is to go to jail or something. And in there, I hope they give it to him too, strike lightning. Uh, in certain things, uh, guys, I could reform myself. I could be a re- Habilitated. There's certain things I don't want to be rehabilitated on. You killing kids, you raping kids, y'all got to go. Like, you know, skin the life. Shout out Ted Smooth, DJ Ted Smooth. They calling him Mr. Weekend. He's on 94.7 The Block, killing him in New York every Friday and Saturday. You know? And so, oh, speaking of delusional kings, uh, of delusion. Sebastian Telfair telling Cam and Mace that he was better than Starberry. Yo, listen, man. Stephon Marbury, man, was one of the greatest players ever to play. Oh, he's the best in New York City. So we talking Mark Jackson, Ross Strickland. We talking Earl of Pearl. We talking Kareem Abdul. We got, yeah, yeah. Is 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 delusional. Now was he nice in high school? I went to see two or three of his high school games, and he did give people the bobble doll. 
You know, he was crossing this one kid over, hit him with the sham. And, you know, I seen the dude, his head was going like Sebastian. He was on his way up. I don't know what he did, you know, when he got to the NBA. That's another thing, you know, I'm the type of guy that sees the opportunity. I'm the type of guy that if I, if I played one game scrimmage for the NBA, I would score. And maybe even 10. And I'm trash. But I would con I would contribute to the game. I would seize the moment. The crowd is there. I'm trying to get them to go. Like, I don't know how these guys work their whole life since kids, go to college, whatever, get to the NBA, then go over there and become like a robot to where they just passing the ball to the guy. Just I would never be that guy. Like I, I you know, I would have to uh rise up to the occasion. You know, I, I, I would never be that guy that don't uh, want to play like that. And uh, shout out to Power to the Patients, uh, trying to fight for the people. Um, you need to know the prices, like everything else. I'm on this phone right now. I know what it costs me. I'm buying a sandwich. I know what it costs me. Hospital is the only place in the world that you go to that you don't know what they're charging you. You have no clue what they charging you. That is not fair of any other business. And so that's what we're doing. Um, and just representing all people, white, black, Latino, Native American, Amish, you name it. You American, we rep repping for you. The less fortunate, you know, some people that you see them limping in the street or some people get sick and they scared they even call an ambulance because they scared of the price. Some people get sick, they scared to go to the hospital because they know they're going to charge them crazy money. They can't send their son or daughter to college. This is real shit. If you don't understand this, something wrong with you. Uh, uh, choose God in good and bad times. Let your darkest moments bring you your most uh, clarity. Um, nah, there's a woman I met. She has a thing on her wrist that says, don't call 911, put me in the Uber. Because she don't want no fucking $50,000 bill coming for three minutes, them taking them there. And so people are really, really uh, frightened about the prices. Even me, man. Yo, yo, let me tell you something, man. Yo, it's crazy, man. I don't care how much money you got. You do not like to get taken advantage of. You just don't. Um, it's the biggest in the game. Peace, y'all. Stay up.